on feeding and clothing the poor, the widows and orphans in Nigeria, providing avenues for them to develop spiritually and financially and proclaim the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ to them and to all people. We provide grocery to widows and poor so that we can feed, they can feed their family with dignity. Currently, we, are, uh, we have monthly raw food distribution of rice, beans, semolina, onions, peppers, tomatoes, and vegetable oil. With God's help, we would like this to be a weekly occurrence and include meat such as fish, chicken, turkey, maybe beef. We also ship and distribute mildly used clothes as often as we're able to get them to Nigeria. We collect men's, women's, children, boys and girls, and babies' clothes, shoes, handbags, and toys. Since 2018, we have made five shipments of as many as seven to 10 boxes at a time. The need is real in Nigeria, and we know that but for the grace of God, that could be you or me. As previously explained, Bethel R is targeted at the spiritual house of God that is in our body, especially in our heart. Our mandate is from two passages of scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 19 where Apostle Paul says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in us and from Romans 12 2 where he beseeched us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so this program will address issues of holiness and lives dedicated to God and his will especially for us who proclaim to be Christians or followers of Christ, those who believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. My name is Bumi Babarin Deho. I'm an evangelist, a writer, and teacher of the word. Before we start, I want to really thank Dayo Agola, aka Babalunta, for providing the avenue for this program. Dayo, thank you. May the Lord richly bless you. In today's program, I would like to share some thoughts from the theme, Way of the Cross. Way of the Cross. Our anchor text will be taken from two passages of scripture, John 14, 6 and John 10, 7 to 18. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, to Thomas, I am the way, 
the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Then John 10, 7, uh, John 10, 7 through 18 says, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hardling, he who is not sh the shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me. Because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down by myself. I have power to lay down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Shall we pray? Father God, you are awesome in heaven and on earth. You created the opportunity for this program to go out. I praise your name for this opportunity. I do not take it for granted. And I ask in the name of Jesus, that you will reduce man, you will reduce me, and you will lift yourself up. Father, you promise that if I open my mouth wide, you will feel it. I'm asking now in the name of Jesus that you will speak through me so that none of the adversaries will be able to contradict or resist. This I pray in the mighty name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, let's look at the theme, way of the cross. You know, people argue that Christianity is not the only way to heaven. However, just as Christ is saying categorically here, I would want to believe that through the two passages of scripture that we are looking at, what Jesus Christ is saying here is that he alone is the way. He alone is the truth. He alone is the life. Not only that, he is saying that he alone is the door for the ship to enter in. That whoever allows him to lead them, as a shepherd leads the sheep, will not perish. Because he has laid his life down to protect them from such destruction. How did he do it? He did it by the way of the cross. I would like for you to search every literature. Read through the, uh, the books of other religions. Compare them to the Holy Bible to see if any other leader of any other religion could make this assertion. You see, only Jesus laid down his life for the sheep by way of the cross. I know some, theological, some theologians have said that it's either that Jesus Christ was a lunatic or that he was really indeed the son of God. I would say to you that he really is the son of God and the savior of the world. If you look at 2 Corinthians 5.21, Apostle Paul reminds us that for he, God, made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. In order to understand what Jesus Christ is saying about being the good shepherd, we need to examine some scripture passages from the Old Testament so that we can really understand why he said what he said. 
if you look at David intervened to be the one to fight Goliath, he was giving King Saul his resume in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17. Let me read to you verses 34 to 36. This is David now trying to persuade Saul to let him fight Goliath. David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and I struck it and I delivered that lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by the beard and I struck and killed him. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. In that story, David as a shepherd who was willing to face death rather than allow a lion or a bear to take one of the sheep he was uh, attending. A hireling, one who does not own the sheep, would have just run away for his life than face the lion or the bear or as Jesus said, the wolf for that matter. David's father, Jesse, had entrusted him with the sheep, just as our heavenly father has entrusted our souls to his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why Jesus assured us in John 3.16 that whosoever believes in him, actually it was John who said it about Jesus, that whosoever believes in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. The second scenario that I want us to look at is found in the prophecy of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23. We're going to stay in Jeremiah 23 for a while because I really want to, for, I want us for, to understand why Jesus Christ said that those who came before him were thieves and robbers. The, the reason he was calling those shepherds uh, 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 thieves and robbers were because was because they were they were uh, uh, prophets in Israel uh, who were more concerned about their stomachs than about the righteousness of the people. Jeremiah, let me just read Jeremiah one and two, uh, 20, uh, 23, one and two first. He says, "Woe to the shepherds who destroy and catch and, and scatter the sheep of my pasture," says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel against the shepherds who feed my people. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and not attending to them. Behold, I will attend to you for the evil of your doing, says the Lord. Then God made a promise to send a shepherd who will indeed lead his people in righteousness. If you jump to verses 5 and 6, you will see uh, 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 what God is saying here. He says, Behold, the day is coming, says the Lord, that I will raise David, I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now, this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord our righteousness. That is Jehovah Chikanu. Jesus Christ is that shepherd and our unrighteousness, the one who saved his sheep by way of the cross. Notice that Jesus called the shepherds before him thieves and robbers, some even called hirelings, who ran away when the sheep were attacked. Let's search the scripture further in that uh, uh, passage of scripture, Jeremiah 23. Let's look at verses 9 to 11. This is Jeremiah lamenting about what God was telling him. God was telling him some, some really deep things that he was going to do to punish the unfaithful uh, 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 shepherds who were the, the, the prophets. This is uh, Jeremiah speaking. He said, my heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I'm like a drunken man. And like a man whom wine has overcome because of the Lord and because of, my, of his holy words. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of a curse, the land mourns. 
the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. Their course of life is evil and their might is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yes, in my house I have found their wickedness, says the Lord. That is how wicked the prophets were. And you know, our prophets in today's world are sometimes behaving like that, saying what God did not say. And when you get, when you jump to verses 13 through 14, the Lord was still speaking here and he says, I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied by Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me, and her inhabitants are like Gomorrah. Let's jump a little bit, 16 through 17. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of this prophet who prophesied to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own, not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me that the Lord has said, You shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say, no evil shall come upon you. But if they had stood in my counsel, this is verse 22 now, but if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. Many of the prophets and priests of the Old Testament were not faithful or diligent in their calling. They closed their eyes to sins and, and they were poor excuse for models of holiness, of righteousness. So much so that adultery and idolatry were found among them. They refused to tell people about the will of God or his displeasure about their sins. They told them what they wanted to hear and allowed wickedness to continue to defy the land. This distressed God so much and Jeremiah himself was so alarmed at what God had prepared to do to these shepherds as a punishment for their sins. Therefore, God promised to send his son who can shepherd his flock, us, with righteousness. Jesus said, just as he knows his father and his father knows him, so he also knows his sheep and is known by his own. If you are a Christian, you are his own. He has laid down his life for you by way of the cross. When, he, when, when we accept him, we are going in through that door that will lead us to salvation. Let's go back to the anchor scripture that we read in John chapter 10. Look at verse 16. He says, Other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they will hear my voice. And there will be one, fo one, one fold, one flock, and one shepherd. Those of us who have received Jesus as our Lord and as our shepherd must be clothed with the righteousness he wrapped us in when he took our sins and nailed them to the cross at Calvary. We will be the beacon of light that will draw others to him. The atheists, the agnostics, people of other faith who are not yet in the fold. According to Ephesians 2.16, that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enemy. And in verse 18, he says, For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. What is he saying here? What, what was Apostle Paul saying here? Those of us who already received Christ and those who are yet to receive Christ, we are going to be, we are, we are going to be saved together. We cannot afford to be selfish and say, as long as I'm saved, what about those people who are there? What about those who are not in the fold yet? He wants us to bring them to himself. That is what he's saying here. We do not have any righteousness to say that we want to preach to other people. 
We don't have any righteousness of our own. In fact, God already calls all of our righteousness filthy rags. It is the righteousness uh, and, and the righteous living we develop when we follow him that will attract other people to the good shepherd. Our behavior. You've heard people say it. Nobody reads the Bible. They read us. They read you. They read me. If we say we are Christians, we have to be wrapped with the righteousness of Jesus Christ so that we can attract other people to the good shepherd. What the other shepherds could not accomplish in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ accomplished it through the way of the cross. And he did it once and for all. By being the good shepherd, Jesus reconciled us, the, the sheep of God, to himself. He became the propitiation for all those sins that made God angry with the shepherds in Jeremiah's prophecy. But for this sacrificial death on the cross, we would still have been making animal sacrifices as they did in the Old Testament. Jesus said something else in that John chapter 10. If you look at verses 17 and 18 from our anchor scripture, he said, Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down myself. I have the power to lay down and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. This command I have received from my father. We are learning a great lesson from the obedience and humility of Jesus Christ in that scripture. God the Father commanded him to lay down his life and he willingly laid, laid it down. Why? So that we may have eternal life. Jesus Christ is asking the same obedience from us who claim to belong to him. Our Christian work must lead us by the way of the cross. In Mark 8, 30, uh, 34, we read, when he had called his people to himself, when he had called his uh, uh, people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. He assures us in Matthew 16, 25, Mark 8, 35, Luke 9, 24, and Luke 17, 33, that whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for his sake will find it. Apostle Paul referring to the willingness of Jesus to lay down his life by way of the cross. Mentioned this in the book of Philippians. Philippians 2. I want to read verses 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has exalted him, highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those that are under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The apostles who were disciples of Jesus emulated this mind which was in Christ Jesus. When they too laid down their lives for the sake of the gospel. Many of them were beheaded. Many of them were crucified upside down. They were fed to lions, thrown into jail, persecuted without measure. One of them was even thrown into hot oil and he didn't die. So many things happened to them. Why? For the sake of the gospel. We who follow after them must be crucified with Christ also. Our life must reflect that of the good shepherd. Galatians 2, 20 to 21 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. 
And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Remember, he is Jehovah's Shekinah, the Lord our righteousness. So righteousness did not come from the law. It comes from the good shepherd, the one who died by way of the cross. In Romans 6, 5, to, uh, uh, 5 and 6, we read, For if we have been uni united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. What is the man, what is the old man? The old man is our old nature. The old man is the nature of adultery, of fornication, of, uh, uh, of, of lying, of cheating, of stealing. The old man is of gossip. The old man is, oh, I will not let anything touch me. The old man is an eye for an eye. And because of the death of Jesus Christ, we have to shed those things. We have to lay them aside. Remember, the one who died for us is our righteousness. In Galatians 5.24, we read, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Colossians 1, 19 and 20, uh, through 22, he said, For it, it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace, through the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and enemies of your mind by wicked words, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through his death to present you, to present me, holy and blameless and above reproach in this in this sight. Therefore, the writer of Hebrews reminds us in Hebrews 10, 26 to 37, he says, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there's no long, there's no longer a, 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 there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful ex expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the, the adversaries. Who are the adversaries? Those who do not believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those to whom the, the gospel has been preached to and they said no they do not want to have anything to do with the gospel of, of, of Jesus Christ but once we receive Jesus once we say he's our Lord and Savior once we say he's the good shepherd then we cannot afford to sin willfully anymore we are all sinners all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God but those sins would be unintentional they will not be things that we are doing in order to find a way out of, of tight situations. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnared us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before, before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Romans 8.8 8 says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We need to understand that. That is why in 2 Corinthians 5, 20, 21, I want to join my voice with the, with the voices of the ambassadors. Not that I have any, uh, uh, I have the, 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 uh, uh, the prestige of those ambassadors, people like Apostle Paul, Peter, Apostle Peter, Apostle John, the revelators. I cannot be, I cannot say I'm one of them. But I'm struggling, I'm trying, and I want to join them. As they say, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. 
as though God were pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf to, re to be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, for you, for me, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So, what is the way of the cross for those of us who are followers of Jesus Christ? What is the way of, of the cross for us? Number one is love. Love of God and love of our fellow men. Remember the first commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. The second one, and thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor is anybody, everybody. You cannot afford to do evil against anybody. You have to love them. And if you love somebody, you will not hurt them. If you love somebody, you will not lie against them. If you love somebody, you will not, you will not set traps for them to fall into. Love is very important. Remember, it is on the basis of love that Jesus Christ redeemed us by way of the cross. Number two, peace. As much as it's, it's within our power, we need to live at peace with all men. Live at peace with all men. Apostle Paul says sometimes it's okay to agree that you are wrong, even though you are not wrong, just so that there will be peace. The one who judges the heart and the mind knows who is right and who is wrong. You don't always have to win every argument. Let there be peace. Let peace reign in our heart and in our minds. Let peace reign in our home. Let peace reign in our church. Amen. Number three, we have to emulate Jesus Christ in submission and obedience. He obeyed his father even to the death on the cross of Calvary. Sometimes God will ask us to do something that may not look uh, elegant, that may be scary. He knows what he's doing. Let us be obedient. The word of God says that God will punish every act of disobedience. When our own obedience is fulfilled, many people are disobedient to God and they want other people to obey them. It doesn't work like that. God requires our obedience. Then he can punish the acts of disobedience from other people. Number four, faith. Without faith, we know that it is impossible to please God. And we also understand that he is faithful who has made a promise. Whatever promise God makes, he will fulfill. His words his word are yea and amen. Whatever he says he will do, that's what he will do. You know, his, th his thoughts towards us are not of, of evil. They are of good. So we need to have faith in him. He told the children of Israel, he said, I did not ask the children of Jacob to seek me in vain. If he's asking us to, 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 to carry our cross, if he's asking us to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to take up our cross and follow him, he knows what he's doing. Take up that cross, follow him. Because if you try to take your, uh, if you try to protect your life, the word of God says that you will lose it. But if you lose your life because of the gospel, guess what? You will take it again. This is not the end of our journey. Our 30 years and 40 years and 90 years is not the end of our journey. 120 years is not the end of our journey. We will begin another journey when we close our eyes in death here and then appear before the judgment throne of God where we could live in eternity. Everybody will live in eternity. Is your eternity with God or is it in hell? We need to know that. So, let's look at uh, 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 tribulation. Tribulation is one word that most Christians do not want to hear. Nobody likes to suffer for Christ. But remember, you're in good company. You are in good company. The, the, minister, the, 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 the uh, uh, prophets before us, the evangelists before us, the apostles before us, they all went through tribulation. Remember what Jesus Christ himself said. He said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. Remember, it is the same sun, the same rain, the same snow that falls, uh, that, that falls on the righteous and the unrighteous. And so, it, it, God knows what he's doing. 
he, he, he promised us that when, when that passes through the waters, he didn't say if you pass. He said when. When that passes through the waters, I'll be with, with thee. And through this, uh, 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 the, 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 the river, they shall not overflow, uh, overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle against thee. Why? Because he loved us. He said, I've loved you, and I, I, I will use other people's life for you, for, uh, to replace yours. That is the promise that he, that he makes. You know? And, and there, there was, there, there's one promise he makes that I really like. You know? He said, they will surely gather together. That people will not talk about you. That people will not persecute you. Forget it. They will surely gather together. He said, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. I created the spirit that blows the coal in the fire and brings forth an instrument for his works. I also created the waster to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment. He said, you yourself, thou shall condemn. That is the promise of God, you know. And he, he also told us that there's no temptation that has befallen us that is not common to man. But God is faithful. Who will never allow us to be tempted beyond what we're able. And he will, with that temptation, provide a way of escape. You know? So, and and the, the, the word of God says, those who endure to the end will be saved. And another thing that I really like about, about the prophecies of Isaiah was Isaiah 40, I think it's Isaiah 49. When God says, shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be delivered and the prey of the, uh, of the terrible shall be taken away. For I will contend with him who contend with thee and I will save thy children. I will feed them who oppress thee with their own flesh and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. This is the God we work for. This is the God we follow. This is the God we trust in. If you have your faith in him, even in tribulation, he will see you through. I like what Apostle Peter, we don't really hear much from Peter, the, 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 the old gentleman. I like what he said in 1 Peter 4. I'm going to read a, a few verses of that scripture. He said, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for, this name, for, for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God's and of God rest upon you. On their part, he's, bl he's blasphemed. But on your part, he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. I read, that's very encouraging. That's very encouraging. And then, look at uh, 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 another one, hope. We are saved by this hope. Because hope that is seen is not hope. Why should want anyone hope for what he can see? But when we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with all perseverance. Let's hope in God. Let's put our faith in him. Hope never disappoints. And finally, I want to, uh, I want to go back again to that word, righteousness. Remember, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He's, and he's saying, be holy, even as your heavenly father is holy. Be a follower of the good shepherd, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Sh Shekinah. Apostle James says, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And now, unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his throne with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Before me, the world behind the cross.
Everyone lift your hands and sing the cross. The cross before me. Yeah. 